What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. And in this video, we're going to cover injective functions or sometimes they're called one-to-one -one functions. And sometimes some textbooks, instead of writing out the one-to-one, -one, you'll see notation like this to represent the one-to-one. -one. So basically all of these things mean the same thing. And in this video, I'm going to cover the definition of what they are and how to test for them. And then in a future video, I'm going to cover how one-to-one -one functions relate to inverse functions, the relationship between them. And I'm going to cover that when we go over inverse functions. So to begin to define what a one-to-one -one function is, I actually want to bring back the general definition of just a function. This is from grade 11. And as a review, if you remember, a function basically means that there is one unique output for every input. And to get more technical with the definition, it basically means that there is only one y value or one unique y value. for every x value. So what this means, in other words, is that you can't have more than one y value for a single x value. And if you remember, to test for this, we did something called the vertical line test. So for example, um, let's say we have a parabola like this. As we know, a parabola is a function because notice that it passes the vertical line test, meaning that when we run a vertical line through this, there's no two points on the function that touch for a single x value. So like this x value here, it only has one single y value. And then this x value here has one single y value, or this one here, a single y value, right? So if a vertical line is not touching two points for a single x value, then it passes the vertical line test, and then we know that we're dealing with a function. Another example is, um, let's say we have a sideways parabola like this. Well, this here, we know it's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. Notice when we run a vertical line through this, let's say for this x value, there are two y values, right? And a function can't have more than one y value for a single x value. right? So this fails the vertical line test, and so this here is not a function while this here is a function. So one-to-one -one functions, the uh, definition is actually formatted very similar to this, except everything is sort of reversed. So instead of one unique output for every input, it's actually one unique input for every output. or one unique y value for every x value, it's actually one unique x value for every y value. And instead of uh, you not being able to have more than one y value for a single x value, you can't have more than one x value for a single y value. And instead of a vertical line test to test for one-to-one -one functions, we're going to be doing something called a horizontal line test. Okay, so let's bring back some general parent functions and see whether they're actual one-to-one -one functions. So y equals x, for example. Well, y equals x is just a line that looks like this. So notice it's a function, it passes the vertical line test. All of these uh, graphs that I'm about to draw, they're all functions. But now we're testing whether they're one-to-one -one functions. So 
y equals x, notice if we run a horizontal line through it, it passes that as well because there's no two uh, x values for a single y value. So this here, y equals x, the line, it's a one-to-one -one function. What about y equals x squared, the parabola? Looks like this. Notice that if we run a horizontal line through this, it fails the horizontal line test. Notice that for a single y value, there are multiple x values. Right, so y equals x squared or any parabola is actually not a one-to-one -one function. Now we can make uh, y equals x squared or any parabola a one-to-one -one function, but we have to restrict the domain. So notice that over here at zero and zero, that's where the vertex is. So if we, for example, write y equals uh, x squared and then we restrict the x values that they have to be greater than or equal to zero, that means we wouldn't have this leg here of the parabola then it's a one-to-one -one function. Then notice that it will pass that horizontal line test. But if there's no restriction on that domain, it's just a general parabola, y equals x squared, or any sort of transformation on the x squared, any other parabola, it's always not going to be a one-to-one -one function. It's always going to fail that horizontal line test. What about a function like um, y equals x cubed? Okay, so y equals x cubed, if we graph it, if you remember, the graph looks like this. Notice that y equals x cubed, it is a one-to-one -one function because it does pass that horizontal line test. There's no multiple x values for a single y value. So y equals x cubed is a one-to-one -one function. What about a more unique function? Let's. Uh, even sine x. Let's try a trig function. Okay, sine x looks like this. Keeps going on forever. What about y equals sine x? Notice that it is not a one-to-one -one function. It fails the uh, horizontal line test. So for example, for this y value here, there's going to be two x values. Right? You can't have that with a one-to-one -one function. So y equals sine x, y, uh, y equals cos x, or any transformation of one of those two trig functions, it is um, not a one-to-one -one function. What about functions in different formats? So like a table or a mapping diagram. So what if you get something like this? Well, what you can do is you can actually plot the points. That's one way to do it. So if I draw a uh, graph here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. You could plot these points and then you could run the um, horizontal line test through them. So negative 3 and negative 6, that is like uh, down here. We got negative 1 and 5 which would be up here. Then we got zero and negative two. Then we got three and zero, and then we have four and two. So notice if we run the horizontal line through that, there's no two points that are touching at the same time. So this here would be a one-to-one -one function. Now, if you were to just look at the table, you can see that there are no y values that are repeating, right? So all of the y values here are unique. But let's say that this y value was negative two. Well, then this wouldn't be a one-to-one -one function because for that single y value of negative two, we have two corresponding x values of zero and four. So the way that would look on the graph, this 4 and negative 2, instead of being 4 and 2, it would be 4 and negative 2 down here. And then notice it's going to fail that horizontal line test right there. Right? Two 
x values for a single y value. All right, but it wasn't negative two, it was positive two, so it passed the horizontal line test, so it was a one-to-one -one function. Now, what about this over here? Uh, what you can do with this is, uh, if you remember a mapping diagram, the first column is the x value, and then the second column is the y value. So you can actually take this and convert it to points. So we got negative one and four, uh, we got 0 and negative 2, uh, 2 and negative 3, and then we have 4 and 1, and then we have 5 and 4. So if I actually take these, I'm going to plot them on the same uh, graph here. So negative one and four, that's gonna be right here. Zero and negative two down here. Two and negative three, that's like over here. Uh, four and one, that's here. And then we got five and four. So notice if we run a horizontal line through this over here at that y value of four, there are two corresponding x values, right? This five here and then the negative one. So it fails that horizontal line test. And so this would be uh, not a one-to-one -one function. So if you're not too comfortable with mapping diagrams and tables initially, I highly suggest maybe taking them, plotting them out, taking the time to do that, and then looking at the graph and then relating back to the table and the mapping diagram and seeing why it's a one-to-one -one function or why it's not, why it fails that horizontal line test. And then with enough practice, you'll just be able to look at a table or a mapping diagram and then tell from that without the graphing.